I think from a best practice perspective, it's really SOP should be le- written on a high level so that the how is actually not necessarily in a standard operating procedure, but in a level down in a work instruction. So often what um, pharmaceutical companies or biotechs are doing really wrong and often creates either misalignment or outdatedness is really that SOPs are written at a level where it easily becomes simply not followable or Mm -hmm soon as a business strategy changes or let's say roles and responsibilities changes the sops need to be touched which sometimes really creates challenges because then you're constantly catching up so i think writing sops at a level where smaller business change decisions really don't impact an sop that should really be the best practice an additional i think pitfall often is that SOPs are really reflecting job titles in tra- instead of actual roles. So keep SOPs ideally either on a functional level or at perhaps an appendix where a function is really defined in that's the level of role that could actually execute that particular task. And then you don't really have to constantly change your SOPs if roles and responsibilities within a function change. So I think keep it even from a roles and responsibilities level at a level where you don't always have to touch it as soon as roles within that particular department or function change. Mm -hmm. Also, another example is often in SOPs, companies refer to certain names of systems instead of just saying your electronic document system they say Viva or something like that. So as soon as the system changes, obviously you would need to change your SOP, which simply doesn't make sense. Just keep it as as a level where when you write it and when you change something, it doesn't necessarily need a revision to your actual process because you have defined it on a level where it's simply more generic. I think the last point is probably keep your vendors out of your SOPs. Mm. When you want something defined, which let's say a CRO is supposed to be doing, write it in a way that you oversee it, meaning write it, let's say clinical operations ensures that the contract research organization does this and that, and not say the CRO is supposed to be doing that. So that's, I think, another area where I've seen or where I had to really introduce a lot of change wording into SOPs to make sure that it is written in a way that it is the, what the company is actually doing and not what your vendors are doing, because you cannot really f- define what your vendors are doing in your own SOPs. I think structure to an SOP is really important. So basically clearly define your scope of the SOP, which functions or departments are impacted by your process. And then obviously every company does it differently, but I really appreciate a process maps. So ideally, really, first of all, start with mapping your process and then really writing it up. Otherwise, it can get quite convoluted if you really do it the other way around, because visualization, I think, helps to really understand where the process really works. Companies sometimes really only write SOPs where it's actually a regulated process, but some companies really also define business process. But I think if you really define a process that that kind of supports a regulation or a guideline, I I recommend really referring to that guideline in your SOP itself so that during an inspection, for example, you can actually say this particular process supports ICHE6 section so-and-so. You don't necessarily have to refer to the section because obviously guidelines change but at least refer to the actual guideline an SOP is supporting to make it easier for an inspector, for example, to also understand how your process actually supports their requirements. So I think you need to be sure to understand who actually owns that particular process, but then also during the scope definition of the SOP, you really need to be clear who is actually part of the process. And those roles or those functions really should be part of the actual SOP, at least review, to make sure that they are really fully aligned with what that owning function defines for them. 
So I think it needs to be a collaboration, not necessarily in the writing process, but definitely in the review process of an SOP. I think it's really a challenging topic to some extent, but what obviously I think often works is really to work with planned process deviations in our industry, at least. So I think if it's really a minor change, then I think you can easily implement a planned process deviation where you simply define that from that time point on, basically a certain task is done by a different role, then it's easily captured in a process deviation. But if the impact is really more substantial, like business process changes or there's a reorganization or a company is acquired and obviously that impacts your process, then sometimes there is no way around to simply really rework the whole thing that often creates then misalignment. But I think we're working with planned process deviations. You really understand the impact of change and can define it. That's probably the most compliant way to handle it.